Bach, you need to be boxed, okay? Theater kids, let's assemble to talk about Wicked! <laughs> Honestly, okay. Clearly, we know what team I'm on. Even my microphone has the color. But let's talk about Wicked. All right, I had to put the microphone down because I couldn't be serious. But anyway, at this point, girl, I have seen Wicked twice. I really want to see it a third time because my second time was kind of hijacked. But anywho, it was so, so, so good. Oh, excuse me. Lighting, please adjust yourself. Okay. As I was saying, it was so good. I went through so many emotions. That is my first experience with Wicked. I'm a theater kid, but I have not seen the show on Broadway and I have not read the book. But mark my words, 2025, God willing, I will read that book and I will be at Broadway to see that show. I definitely was as I am now because something is going on with my eye. I was crying. I was tearing up at some parts and I was crying. By the end, when she hit that, uh, <laughs> I cannot, I'm not a singer. When she hit that end note, <laughs> wait, you guys know the commercial, my sister just showed. She's like, that's my line. Uh, <laughs> Nailed it. That's my line. I'm team alpha but down, hence my green. <sighs> we will get into it, but that production was so good. The movie was 10 out of 10. Great job to all the actors, the actresses, the musicians, the cast, the crew, the directors, the producers, the outfit people, the makeup artists, the hairstylists. Excuse me, why am I being disrespected? with this lighting. Thank you. As I was saying, everybody involved from the makeup to the nail artist, to the director, to the actress, everybody, great, 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 great job. I enjoyed myself. Like I said, I do want to see it again, even though I've already seen it twice. I do need to watch it again before part two comes out. The fact that we have to wait a year. So that gives me enough time, like I said, to go see Broadway and to go read the book. Um, Cynthia said this in an interview and I completely agree. Them making this a live action movie, and usually I'm not supportive of live action movies because they're not usually this good, but this one was so good. And she talked about how this gave access to people who can't go see Broadway. And maybe you can't see Broadway, not only like because the cost, but also it j just might be way too far away for you to access that. So I love that this is giving access to people around the world to know this story uh, because there's so much depth in it. So let's get into a little bit more about the Wicked part one. And I have a lot of notes on my phone and I don't want to forget anything. But the director, John M. Chu, he did a wonderful job on this production. I realized that a lot of movies that I like, he's actually directed, um, such as In the Heights, Crazy Rich Asians, Now You See Me, Step Up 2, and Step Up 3D. So, you know, he's done a lot. He's done other works too, but those are the ones that I'm most familiar with and he's also produced. But yeah, I, I, if you hear me, John, I need a director's cut. Like I need an hour of how you came up and like what was your thought process behind a lot of the scenes and like I just want to know what you were thinking okay I need an hour special pronto before part two comes out so please get to work on that and release that for us thank you because I I know a lot of I'm not excuse me I'm so excited I just I'm talking so fast I know a lot of other people are also interested too so if we could have a dedicated director's cut that would be stunning, superb, superbulous, fantastical, as they would probably say in the musical. Yeah, I I need it. A lot of us need it, so please. But yeah, he did a great job directing. I've been watching like little snippets and I've enjoyed what he has to say. Let's get into our leading ladies. First off, we'll start with Miss Ariana Grande, Arianka. <laughs> I'm so unserious, but she played Glinda, formerly known as Galinda. This is, I got the Funko Pops. I think they're so cute. 
um, this hair flip, break my neck to flip my hair. If you are an Ariana fan or Stan, you know Sis had popular on the first album. She sang that song and now look at this full circle, it's like manifestation. And she's always said that she's wanted to play Glinda for you know, like for years now. So that is amazing that she got to play the part. She did amazing. My personal unprofessional opinion, I think Ariana needs to take two years off of music. Hear me out. <laughs> two years off of music and just do Broadway. Even if it's not Broadway like shows, but I think she should do the shows. Um, she could do like how they did a movie adaptation of a Broadway show because she was acting her tail off. Sometimes I would even like when she wasn't front and center, like the dance scene when the prince came and they were in the library. I was like, okay, sis is, she was hitting them steps. I was like, girl, you, you are a theater kid and you were invested. You are the character. And she did not disappoint. She really delivered as Galinda slash Glinda. So Ariana, you did your thing. I've been I've been following you from the beginning. Well, at least my beginning was since you know you were playing Cat. But I've been on this ride since the first album. Okay, so I'm proud of you. Go Ariana. You <laughs> did the thing as Glinda. Moving on. Let's talk about Alpha. Um, here's a little close up of her Funko. And Alphaba was played by Cynthia Rainbow. And Cynthia, Cynthia is very, very talented. Not only as a actress, but as a vocalist. And she really did what needed to be done. I, the fact that she could evoke so much emotion for me playing this role as Alphaba, but not only that, when she hit the last note, even though I've seen the movie twice, the second time I, I was crying just as much. I don't know what is like triggering my brain with that final note when she's like, I'm not gonna do it again because <laughs> I can't hit it. But I'm like, what are you doing? But she really, really embodied the character. She embraced it. Even the little things like sometimes when she would like smirk at the like in the scene, I'm like, Wow, you are really invested in who you are playing. So great job to Cynthia playing Alphaba. You did what you needed to do. These two leading ladies, you played your part very well. I am proud of both of you, okay? With this being said, this is spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the movie and you plan on seeing it, um, please just skip over this part because I don't want to spoil anything for you. I hate being one of those people that spoil things for people or somebody spoils something for me. So, spoiler alert. Let's get into my thoughts and theories about this show. This one might be far-fetched. I don't care. <laughs> I think the wizard is Alphabet's biological father. <laughs> and I, I don't have full you know theory about why i think that but something is telling me like that was the man with the elixir that you know left the bottle with her mom so i don't know why i feel that way but this may be unrelated but i'm like connecting it um to why i also think that he's her dad is because why did the teacher know that the rain would affect her skin like you just met her two seconds ago how do you already know that she can't be under the rain. That's suspicious. That makes me question things. That could be a wrong theory, but I'm, I'm it's a theory. I wanna look back at these theories also <laughs> um, next year to see like how off or like correct I was. So another thing, obviously, you know, the prince was, he was going after um, Linda at first, but then, you know, him and Alphabet had that moment with the lion cup and I was like, ooh, Ooh, ooh. and then now he's like conflicted he's like what do i do i like her i like her like my head is turning i personally think in act two this is what's gonna happen i think one of the twists and turns is going to be that the prince is either going to help alphaba or confess his feelings and glinda's gonna know and that's gonna send her over the edge it is gonna be her 13th reason <laughs> it's gonna be the reason why she's like all right you know what 
let's go after Alphaba. It is what it is. Since she want to steal my man. Could be far-fetched. I don't know, but I think it's a possibility because I don't think we're done seeing this prince and Glinda obviously hasn't picked up that there's something happening between them. She just knows something's off, but I think that the prince and Alphaba are gonna have a little canoodles or something and then Alf and then Glinda's gonna be like, girl, what? What? So yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, they'd be hiding Easter eggs in the movies. Did y'all peep? that when Glinda was giving Clippa a makeover and she's like pulling out the shoes and she gave her the red pair that end up on Dorothy's feet for her to get back home. I peeped that. So I was like, ooh, hmm, what's this about? So, <laughs> so certain things like that I would notice like popping up. Even too in the beginning, like when um when Alphaba was like telling, she literally told her whole story. She's like, I hope there's a whole day dedicated to me, but she didn't specify and there was, they were dedicated to celebrating her demise. Another theme is like how the people and the animals were integrated at first. And then all of a sudden, the people started pushing the animals out, causing harm on the animals. Does that not sound like the history of some countries? where the colonizers were just like, oh, we're, we just wanna do our thing and that, it sounds like them, doesn't it? So I was like, hmm. Actually, this is a theory, this is not something I noticed. I'm like, you know, they said in the beginning, the Wicked Witch is dead, but is she dead? Is it a rue? Is it a bamboozlement for our eyes? Maybe she's not dead. Maybe they played us. Maybe they made it appear to be that she's dead, but really she's alive in a hiding. Theory could be right, could be wrong. If I'm right, yo. But yeah, I'm like, they said she was dead, but I don't know, we just see the puddle. But you know, I, I, something something's telling me that Alphaba's death was staged. Some other themes, Alphaba being like ostracized for being different resonated with me. I'm sure it resonated with a lot of people who have been made fun of or ostracized for being different, whether it is um, a disability, whether it is race, whether it's religion, whether it is something else, gender, whatever it is, or um, a combination of those things, or even something else that wasn't mentioned, like being in a marginalized community, sometimes you do feel alone, you feel othered, and this was a theme that was very apparent in the movie. Yeah, sometimes it was like, wow, like thank you for helping us feel seen um, because I know there's a lot of us out there that have felt like Alphaba has felt um, throughout the, the show. So I think that they conveyed that really well and it's just important to like treat people better. Like why were they treating her so harmful, you know? As somebody who's part of different groups considered to be the minority, it was great to you know see our journey displayed in a you know different way but i hope people start to like let it click like this is not something we're making up like this is real life uh, even though you know it was portrayed through fiction the father really upset me like i know that is not his biological daughter but it is still your daughter because y'all are a family how about you treat her as such i hated that he kept misdirecting the anger at her. The anger needed to be at your wife who was stepping out on you before you even barely made it out the door. The door didn't even slam shut and she was already like, all right, let the next one in. Like, you should have been mad at her. You should not have been mad at Alphaba. She literally had nothing to do with and her affecting your life. Like, that wasn't her choice. So I was mad that he was mad at her. He should have been mad at his wife for cheating on him. <laughs> Clearly, I'm passionate about that. Another thing is Bach needed to be boxed, okay? Because why were you acting like that? You knew who your heart was tied to. You knew who you wanted to be with. And then you were playing with this girl. And also, side note, side note, the fact that they kept calling Nessa terribly beautiful was crazy to me. Crazy. Um, and I, I like that Alphabet was like, and I'm beautifully terrible. Like... <laughs> Anywho, but yeah, Bach needed to be bop, bop, boxed. Like, because why were you playing with this girl's emotions? Um, I'm glad that like she peeped it, um, even though she stayed a little longer than she should, but then she, then she eventually came to her senses and realized like, 
yeah this man's not really for me he's playing in my face he just needed to stay on business like the girl don't like you but that's okay if you want to go after her you do that and leave nessa out of it and then you need to you know get through your head she don't want you she want that prince so yeah that was like another thing that really annoyed me about him okay another theme that was in the movie was that people of power know who really holds the power and that's why they put on a facade or they put on this like personality to really keep people on them and what they want to portray so for instance a wizard like you're just a man you're just a man and then you put on this whole ensemble you have this big booming voice the fire you have this big electronic face of you and behind it all you're just a human being like and he's putting all this together and people are respecting him because they think that he's some higher entity when he's just a man and with all of that like he's pushing out the animals and just like instead of having instead of having an environment where like they could coexist he's like oh it's for the better of us like if you peep to in the beginning of the movie the Anna, the school was like behind the emblem where it was the wizard it was actually animals so clock it he, he knew what he had to do to like maintain his power and this illusion of him being this almighty thing another example of like this power dynamic was with <clears throat> glinda and alphaba and obviously like glinda she does have like power in like whatever she says like people uh follow and you know with mostly without question but she was like i'm gonna help alphaba but no matter what i'm still top like i'm still gonna be more popular than you so i think that she was realizing that people really do like alphaba as a person and she realizes especially when alphaba was heading off to oz and everybody was cheating for her like you could see her face change and the jealousy was really like striking and i'm just like girl like why can't you guys both be you know the final theme that i want to talk about um of the movie is there's a difference between being fundamentally a good person versus portraying yourself as a good person and obviously we know uh how the world works unfortunately sometimes the actual good people are mislabeled and they're presented as x y and z to get a certain agenda across and that has been a theme in history for years and years so anyway so in conclusion i just want to say i enjoyed the movie there was so much to dissect and last but not least i cannot wait for part two i don't even think this thing is on but it doesn't matter because it's green and i'm team alphaba and part two is going to be a roller coaster i know how theater works i know how musicals work i know how plays work it is going to be a journey and i'm locked in i'm ready for part two wicked you're gonna see me all of next year okay let me know your thoughts respectfully down in the comments i want to have this discussion theater kids we up we up i'll see you in my next video take care